Happy Sabbath, everyone. It is so good to be in God's house. Can we give Jesus a round of applause for bringing us to another week? That's one of my favorite hymns, Safely Through Another Week. And we are all here today, gathered in one accord. And we just want to welcome the presence of the Lord. Amen? He's with us, but let's come on and welcome him. Make him feel warm and welcomed here. Amen? The presence of the Lord Bible Conference. We're coming to you live from the Sharon SDA Church here in Mount Vernon, New York. We've been doing this every night, all month. And you know, if you're just tuning in, 
you have missed out. You need to go back and check us out on our YouTube page at Sharon STA. But here tonight, we have a special program. The Holy Spirit is in the house. You can hear the praise team behind me. We are praising the Lord. Looking forward to having you join us. So like, share, subscribe, and get ready. Hold on to your seats. The Holy Spirit has something special for you tonight. Your journey to hope, healing, and happiness has begun. We are excited to have you join us each night. If you're registered online, see you at 7 p.m. for our next meeting. Bring a friend or join online. Don't miss a night with Dr. Everybody Emil Pula from October Let's 1st to the 29th. Let everybody confess. Come on and shame the devil. Say, I got it. You have been blessed, courtesy of the Journey to Joy Bible Conference. Amen, amen, amen. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Oh, my goodness. Listen, listen, listen. Before we take it any further, let's give it up for our praise team and our musicians. You were awesome, as usual. Every night, awesome. Thank my you. goodness, let me tell you, for those of you watching at home, it sounds good, but you have no idea. You need to be here so you can really, really hear it and feel it. Yeah, and um, after a long week of, sorry, after a long week of uh, work, of maybe being beaten up, Lord, aren't yes. you glad that the Sabbath is here so that we can push all of that away? Amen, amen, away amen. And bask in the Father's goodness. All right? This is our chance to say thank you, Lord. Thank you for letting us be here. Thank you, thank you for letting us have a moment of rest, a day of rest, 24 hours. Thank you for allowing us to commune with you. It is a beautiful gift. Yeah, sure. And think about it. He loved us so much that he created the Sabbath for us to rest so that we can reflect on the creation of all of this. Yes. He is so good. He is and, so good. And, and being that we are his creation, what I love is that I get to forget all the negative things that were said to me about me this week and just focus on what he thinks about me, which means you get to focus on what he thinks about you also. Amen. Okay? Because remember what Pastor Peeler said? He said we're all masterpieces. Yeah? That's right. <laughs> That's right. So we, we have some, some gifts. That, wait, do we have some announcements? Yeah, as usual, we have some announcements. This is your last chance. Tomorrow, uh, we, uh, well, first of all, we still have transportation for 914-664-8586 if you call before five, okay? We're still asking for your prayer requests, okay? It's, it's unfortunate that this is coming to an end because I have learned so much, but all good things come to an end for now because when Jesus comes back, nothing good is coming to an end, okay? Amen, amen. <laughs> so... Remember to write down your names and your prayer requests in the back of your cards. They will be prayed over. Uh, if you don't have a card, please scan the, Q car, the, the QR code. And uh, I, we, we should ask now, I think, how many? Oh, one more thing. Six o'clock tomorrow, we are having a concert. Everybody is invited. This is going to be like the culmination. You don't want to miss to this. Joy. You yeah. don't want to miss it. Yeah, okay. yeah, because this will be, we, we get to have some fun. We get to sing with all the praise singers that have been here every night, and it's going to be awesome. So we invite you to please come at 6 o'clock, no cost. And uh, are you ready to? Almost. I just want to put one more shameless plug yes. for the Sharon SDA YouTube page. If you haven't subscribed, you need to subscribe because although we are talking about all good things must come to an end, if you subscribe to the channel, then you can see all of the messages and you can look at them whenever you want. And believe me, that's something you're going to want to do to fortify and to help you build that relationship with the Lord. So like, share and subscribe. OK. All right. I'm all done. Now. Oh, I'm all done. I'm all so done. here we go. Uh, today, I am asking again. We are asking. Are there any first-timers here? 
No judgment. What? All right. Not the judgment. They're celebration. All Welcome. right. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome. We have a gift for you. Yes, we do. Uh, you can give her the choice. Of... I'll take this. Yeah, yeah, whichever one she likes, because she's a first-time visitor. Amen. Yes. All right. Anybody here with a guest or guests plural? Nobody here with a guest. You guys are keeping this secret all to yourselves? Again, they're probably on their way. They're looking <laughs> for parking. That's what okay. it is. All right, then. So next one. Who has been here every night? Amen. I see two. One, two, three, three four, four, five. five. All okay. right. Keep your hands up, okay? So that because I had someone stop me the other day and they were like, I didn't get it. So make sure you keep your hands up, you know? Uh, and any other? No, I, I think that's it. So yeah. that all that's left for you to do is just buckle your seatbelts because the Holy Spirit is coming in hot with a message specifically for you. Remember, this is the Journey to Joy Bible Conference. We'll be, we are building links in our relationship with Jesus, and it is just, it's been outstanding all month long. Amen? Okay, so something for our online audience. How many of you have enjoyed Journey to Joy? You have to say it loud so that the online audience can hear you and know that you are real. How many of you have enjoyed it? That's yes. right. Amen. Yes. <laughs> and we are looking forward to how Pastor Peeler is going to teach tonight, what he's going to teach. Are you excited? Let's bring it. All right. Then. All right. Smoking causes sickness and disability, and it kills. There are more than 4,000 chemicals in tobacco smoke, 60 of which are known to cause cancer. Smoking harms nearly every organ in the body, reduces your health, and causes many diseases. Let's see how it affects the smoker. It causes oral and lung cancer and increases the risk of many other cancers. It also causes breathing problems and increases the risk of dangerous infections like pneumonia. Smokers have more of a chance of having a heart attack and are twice as likely to have a stroke. Smoking can even accelerate hair loss in men. Smoking also affects the eyes and smokers are more likely to develop cataracts as they age and it raises the risk of developing weakened bones or osteoporosis. Smokers tend to have yellow teeth and develop gum diseases, persistent bad breath, and other oral hygiene problems. Above all, it kills five million people every year and makes many more fall ill. Passive exposure to cigarette smoke also damages health, not only to themselves, Smokers also expose others to tobacco smoke in offices, homes, and public places. Those most at risk are their own family and friends. Passive smoking exposes non-smokers to most of the same toxic gases, chemicals, and fine particles that smokers inhale. Passive exposure causes similar health effects as for those who smoke. Children are particularly susceptible and are more likely to suffer from asthma and serious lung infections. Cigarettes contain nicotine, which is highly addictive. Some research has suggested that it can be more addictive than heroin. Even if you want to quit, you may find it difficult because you are addicted to its effects. So it's important never to start smoking as it is difficult to stop later. And if you already smoke, stop as soon as possible. Now's the time to quit smoking and tell others how to do the same. Life is better without smoke. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Let's see some smiles and some fit. Well, master on. Yes. Well, smile with your eyebrows. Can I get some smiles in your eyebrows? Yes. Praise the Lord, everybody. 
We want to bless the Lord with you. We want to clap our hands. We want to give the Lord all the praise that we possibly can with everything that we do, right? Move our little bikes, little, little warm ourselves up, right? So come on and bless the Lord with me. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Come on and bless the Come on. 
Now it's time to pray. I'd like to invite you to stand with me as we talk to our God. You're so holy, Lord. Hallelujah. Worthy is your name, our kind and dearest best friend. Safely through another week, you have brought us on our way. We are delighted to be in your presence this Friday evening in these hallowed Sabbath hours, praising your name because it is you who, who has enabled us to be here. It is you, it is your life that is in our veins. It is your breath that is in our lungs. And we are grateful we praise you tonight. I pray, Lord, that you would forgive us for our sin. It's, we are human beings, you know our frame. And though we do our best, we constantly fall short before you. And so I ask first and foremost for the forgiveness of our sins. But also, Lord, we've come with our requests, our worries, our concerns, the things that we carry on our hearts. Some of us, the things we carry on our hearts is the decisions that we are trying to make for you. We've been hearing Dr. Peeler night after night throughout the entire course of this crusade. And I pray, Lord, that your Holy Spirit would convict those who need convicting, that it would deliver those who need delivering, that it would heal those who need healing, and it would comfort those that need comfort. In particular, I raise before you the decision cards. Your children asking, making choices for you, but also raising their requests, seeking to know your word, choosing baptism, choosing faith, praying for their loved ones, those with illness, asking for your blessing on their financial challenges, their workplaces, their coworkers, their loved ones, their children, their grandchildren, their education, their health, some things we have no knowledge of, but you who knows all things. Do not, fall, do not fail your children tonight. You never fail. I pray that you would intervene on their behalf, that everyone who has seek, sought you tonight would have a testimony. It pays to serve Jesus and to take everything to you in prayer. As we come to the conclusion, this is the last night of the journey to joy conference I pray that you would pour out a special blessing on the meeting tonight I pray that you would provide a special anointing on your servant Dr. Peeler as he continues to stand before your children allowing himself to be an instrument for you for your voice for your Holy Spirit put the words in his mouth and may we receive what you have in store for us thank you for hearing our prayer in the name of Jesus we pray Amen. Please stand for the theme song. Bye. 
Everybody, are you glad that your life is in the hand of the Lord? Come on, everybody. Come on, everybody. Are you glad that he is the King of Kings? Are you glad that he is the Lord of Lords? Are you glad that he's the maker of heaven and earth? Are you glad that he gave you another Sabbath? Are you glad that he gave you a job to go to? Are you glad that he saved your soul? Are you glad that he made you whole? Are you glad that he, he just keeps on giving to you day after day? After day, after day, after day, after day, after day, somebody ought to shout, thank you, Jesus. Somebody ought to shout, glory to God in the highest. Somebody ought to shout, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. What a mighty God. What a mighty God. What a mighty God we serve. No matter what may come my way I said no matter what may come my way no matter what may come my way my life is in 
opportunity to come before you on your Sabbath day. From the earliest of our existence into this present time, all you have ever been has been good. And so we celebrate your goodness tonight. We thank you, Lord, for allowing us to come together in your house one more time. And so I thank you, Lord, for the journey, the journey that comes from knowing you because the journey to joy is the journey to Christ. And so, Lord, I thank you, Lord, for lives that are being changed, for, for souls that have been lifted up, for marriages that have been restored, for people that have been encouraged, but most of all, for your spirit that has been given. And so, Lord, tonight, once again, we're asking that you would stand in my body, think with my mind, speak with my mouth. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Because, oh Lord, you are our strength and our redeemer. And so, Lord, take us, break us if you must, but with your divine and loving hands, put us back together again. Because we want you to come by here. So, Lord, even now, even tonight, Lord, transform us into the very fabric of your will. Because our ultimate goal tonight is to be in the raiment of the Most High God. Thank you again for keeping us in the palm of your hands. In the mighty and matchless name of Jesus, we declare that you are God. Let everybody shout out amen. 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 And amen again. While we're standing, while we're standing, we just want you to know that we are so delighted that you are here. That you are here tonight once again. Very in the very presence of God tonight. Can you feel the anointing in the house tonight? Do you, are you in anticipation for what God is going to do once again tonight? Are you glad that the word still works and the word is still alive in 2022? Are you glad that even just on one night that God spoke to your heart and encouraged you? If you've been blessed any during this Bible conference, come on, somebody put their hand together and give God the glory and the praise. I want to thank all of the ministers and all of the churches that have gathered together to, to make sure that this, this, uh, in, in, uh, this Bible conference really came at a time in this fall to encourage somebody, to inspire somebody. But I, I, I'm so glad that I just played a small part and I'm humbled by this opportunity once again. I've been a part of many over the years, and I just know that can't nobody do us like Jesus can. And so I thank you for all of the, the ones, the greeters, the ushers, even the ones who clean up the, the Bible instructors. I thank God for the prayer warriors, for the praise teams night after night, for the musicians, and especially for those of you who's, who've sponsored us and given your gifts, the ones who are online, and the ones who are just giving up of yourselves, I want you to know that God is going to bless. You don't want to miss on tomorrow morning. Uh, God has, uh, again, going to stand in this pulpit, and I would just want you to know that whatever you do, wherever you are, you want to be at the Sharon Church on tomorrow morning to hear another word from the Lord. It's going to be the place to be, and I just want you to know that God is going to bless us. Are you ready for the word tonight? Uh, I said, are you ready for the word tonight? Because if it's not in the word, it doesn't what? Deserve to be heard. But if it's in the book, what are we going to do? All right. Because it's never going to be what Peeler said, but what Peeler read. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Let, let's turn. Let's turn to uh, the, the, the text for the night. And it's Mark the 10th chapter. And we're going to begin at verse 46, Mark 10. And we're going to start at verse 46. It says, Then they reached Jericho. And as Jesus and his disciples left town, a large crowd followed him. A blind beggar named Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, 
was sitting beside the road. When Bartimaeus heard that Jesus of Nazareth was nearby, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Be quiet, many of the people yelled at him, but he only shouted louder. Son of David, have mercy on me. When Jesus heard him, he stopped and said, tell him to come here. So they called the blind man. Cheer up, they said. Come on, he's calling you. What do you want me to do for you, Jesus asked. My rabbi, the blind man, said, I want to see. And Jesus said to him, go for your faith has healed you. And instantly the man could see. And he followed Jesus down the road. For the next few moments, we're going to delve in the topic, how to get past your past. Turn to the neighbor and say, neighbor, tonight we're going to learn how to get past your past. Somebody shout out amen. amen. You may be seated in the very presence of the Lord. We are here tonight, and it has nothing to do with how good we've been. But it has all to do with how good God has been to us. Do I have a witness here today? I'm excited because the grace of God is still available to a sinner just like me. And I have, I have learned even over this uh, last four weeks that we have been together and we have listened to the Spirit teach us night after night I am encouraged because God is a God who is on the move. And he is on the move, listen, in our lives. And the God that we serve does not want you. He does not want me. He does not want us to be stuck and bound where we are. He wants us to keep moving forward. Mm-hmm. And so if in fact, if in fact, you want to agree with God that he wants you to move into a new realm of existence with him, listen, if you want new, if you want fresh, if you want more, if you want better, if you want greater, I am suggesting that it must start by allowing God to transforming you into a better you, which will be a you that ultimately reflects his son. And so I just wanted tonight uh, to encourage my friends. I can't call you friends. Come on and say him out there. I just wanted to encourage my friends, my family tonight with a word that teaches us that we can literally move past our past. And while I was walking through uh, Pastor Doubting, the scriptural neighborhood the other day, I, I stopped by this story in Mark 10 where I was introduced to a man who had a multitude of serious issues. A man living on the side of the road where, where Jesus is making his way to Calvary. Uh-huh. Uh, a man who was existing with a terrible set of circumstances, but, but it all began with a terrible name. His name was Bar Timaeus. Bar Timaeus. Bar is a prefix that means son of. Timaeus, which means the uh, unclean. Bar Timaeus, son of the unclean, a uh, son of, listen, a filthy man. His name meant Bartimaeus, son of an unclean man, a uh, son, a uh, 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 lowlife. His name meant a uh, uh, unclean junior, a uh, son of the unclean. And, and all his life he heard that he was a son 
of an unclean man, unclean junior, a, a chip off the old block. Uh, because we learn early in this, in this Bible conference, the traits of the parents became the tendencies of the children. So this man, Bartimaeus, he had to live his life with the suspicions in the minds of other people of who he is because of whose he was. Somebody here knows what it's like to have the crushing weight of a no or even a low expectation that was put in your spirit early in your life. Uh, uh, somebody here has had to, had to live with a word over them that has limited your outlook in life. So much so that it has been difficult to live out your dream because of where you were born or, or which side of the track you were raised or, or the country of your origin or because of whose child you are, because of your family name or even your gender. Uh, you ain't going to be nothing. You're never going to be nothing. Uh, you're just like your daddy. You're just like your mama. Uh, so we have this blind man uh, broken because of his past, uh, sick, stigmatized because of the label that was passed down to him uh, who was banned uh, to the outskirts of town. Because anybody that was declared unclean could not remain in mainstream society. So you got to recognize that this man, Bartimaeus, an uh, unclean junior, he's not there on the outskirts of town because he is blind, but he's there because he's living with his daddy's baggage. He is literally a casualty of his daddy's uncleanness. I said his name was Bartimaeus, son of the unclean. And so he's blind, he's broke, and he's banned to the outskirts of town, and he was begging. And so, literally, he is living, he is acting, and he's making decisions based on what people have labeled him. Uh, I want you to recognize that if you want to get past your past, the first thing you have to begin, watch this, if you want to get past your past, you got to begin by rejecting the negative names of your past. You got to stop letting people define you by what they are choosing to call you because everything that people call you ain't you. Somebody ought to say amen out there. See, we got to do away with some labels and some nomenclatures uh, and, and some names that people have tagged onto in order to move forward into the plan of God for your life. Uh, you need to get this tonight uh, because when you let others label you, invariably they make your world too small. And once you accept the labels that other people place on you, you start to believe that really is who you are and that you will never amount to anything more than what people label you. Uh, in other words, it, it puts a cap on your potential. So instead, I wish somebody would hear me tonight, instead of letting other people define you, uh, let God tell you who you are. Because he is the one who created you. He is the one who redeemed you. He is the one who called you. He is the one who empowers you. He is the one who one day will reward you. Uh, because the truth is uh, that God loves you. He accepts you. And his, and his approval uh, trumps every else's label that God put somebody out to say amen out there. You got to recognize who you are. God is the one who calls you. He's the one who names you. You are joint heirs with Jesus. Uh, you are more than a conqueror. Uh, you are the head and not the tail. Uh, you are above and not beneath. Uh, you are sons uh, and daughters of the Most High God. Uh, in other words, don't get stuck on what you are called, uh, but rather be focused on what you are called to. Somebody ought to say amen out there. Oh, I know I'm preaching tonight uh, because the enemy will try hard to cloud your future with labels and with things and with thoughts, but also he will try hard to cloud your future when you allow people to block you from achieving all that God has in store for you. 
So you know what that means tonight? I got to talk to you. You know, I'm going to keep it real with you. That also may mean that you have to prune. You got to choose. You got to decide to prune away actual people. I'm talking about uh, let some actual people in your life, some negative influences. Uh, uh, you need to prune away those influences in your life and start making friends, listen to me, based on your destiny and not your history. Because you got to understand, it's not about your history, but about the destiny that God has placed before you. Because here's the reality, y'all. Everybody you start out with, you may not end with. So you got to start with a mindset that says, I'm going to choose people that bring something more to the table than their appetite. Somebody ought to say amen. We, we need to have contributors and collaborators at the table. People who inspire the best in you and hold you spiritually accountable. So you got to check and assess your crowd and stop placing friendships over righteousness. So, so if you're going to get past your past, you're going to move forward. If you want to set a uh, 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 fire to your past, uh, our expectations must move higher than what people have labeled us. And we must choose to have people in our lives based on our destiny instead of our history. If you got that, somebody shout amen. But secondly, if you want to get past your past, listen to me, you have to recognize the importance of being in the right place at the right time. Now, now, clearly, I want you to get this because I did not say you, you have to always be at the best place at the best of times or during the best of times because we have this faulty notion that suggests that success will only come, it will only happen when everything lines up perfectly. In other words, uh, success will come if you have the right parents or, or, or you're born in the right country or you go to the right schools or, or you have the right connections or you have the right denominations or, or you have the right social economic reality. Uh, you have the right look. Uh, often, listen to me tonight, often God does his best work in less than ideal times and seasons. And, and for some of us, if we're truthful, uh, that's the season where we are right now. Because I'm looking at your faces in this very house. I'm talking about I'm looking in the lens, in the cameras, in this very house, uh, uh, in the virtual space, and in this very live house. Uh, there's a whole lot of broken, there's a whole lot of depressed, there are a whole lot of worn out, burned out people in a troubled state of mind, and you don't have any answers. Uh, but I need you to know that you are not here by accidents, you are here by God's providence. Somebody ought to say him out there. And I declare that if you made it to this moment in time and you are still breathing, that means you are still on the mind of a most high God. There is a divine reason, there is a divine purpose in why you are sitting here tonight. God either allowed it, he either ordained it, or he navigated your steps to be here. In other words, it's a divine orchestration. So no matter your present predicament, the realization alone that God has you here and you are alive and you're breathing and in your right mind, it should make you perk up and listen because that means that God is not through with me yet. Somebody ought to say him out there. You see, the devil will always try to convince us that it's over. Uh -huh. uh -uh. See, he will always try, watch this, to put your mind in that negative space. Uh, and, 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 and he wants you to believe uh, that you'll never grow and that you'll never get to the next level. And, and you'll always be where you are. You'll always be stuck stuck and never grow uh, and he will convince you that that it will never get any better than this uh, that I will not ever be able to outlive my label I will never recover from my mistakes uh, I really cannot be forgiven of my sins uh, I will never rebound from my failure I will never be able to move on from my past uh, so the devil say just 
resolve to, to what is. In other words, uh, it is what it is. It is never going to get any better. Uh, but I believe tonight uh, that you showed up at the right place at the right time. Uh, because the truth of the matter is uh, God is relentless uh, in his pursuit to arrest us uh, in order to get our attention uh, so he can finish what he started. Uh, he is committed to complete our total salvation in him uh, because timing with God is paramount because he does nothing. He never does anything before the fullness of time. Uh, uh, come, on, come on, lean in, y'all. It's in the book. Let's take a look. The Bible says that this, this blind beggar, he's not in a prime location. He, he is on, the Bible says, uh, uh, the byway. Uh -huh. He's not in that high traffic area like the gate, but, but he's, he's out in the boonies. He's, he's out in a desolate place. He's out in a lonely place. In other words, uh, this blind beggar, uh, he was not in a good place because it says, watch this, that Jesus was on his way out of town and he ran, here it is, into this blind, broke, band beggar. But here, I want you to get this. For all of his bad hand that he was given, this this broke, blind, band beggar, for all of his band, a bad hand that life had given this man, there is something tonight that is worthy of celebration in this very story. Now, get this, because of his status uh, of unclean, the law said that he was banned from mainstream society, but notice, he was thrown or he was placed, he was relegated to the outskirts of town. Uh -huh. But this, this place where he was banned, where he was placed, where he was relegated, the outskirts of time, listen to me, this road on which he was placed, he was thrown, this road just happened to be the path where Jesus is traveling. This brother was literally thrown or put in the pathway of Jesus. You better get this tonight. So, so whatever law, whatever decree, whatever person that banned this broken and blind beggar, banned him to this desolate place because of his label, really did not know that they were instrumental in setting him up for the greatest blessing of his life. Because he was tossed by the wayside, he was banned to the boonies, uh, but the Bible says he was thrown, ah, y'all didn't get this, uh, in the pathway of Jesus. Uh, well, brethren, listen, I really got one request. Uh, if you ever decide to ban me, this preacher, uh, just, just promise me that you throw me in the pathway of Jesus. <laughs> Because I, I declare that there's no greater place to be when you have been banned than being placed in the pathway of Jesus. Uh, because in the pathway of Jesus, uh, there's a guarantee that Jesus will walk by. He will come by. Uh, because check this. Because he was not accepted within the community, watch this. Because he was banned by society, because, just because, he was not accepted by the mainstream population does not mean that he was not accepted by Jesus. You don't believe me? It's in the book. Let's take a look. Why? Because now this blind and broken and van beggar gets an opportunity to encounter the Lord at the worst time of his life. See, many times, ladies and gentlemen, the best spiritual opportunities come at the worst times in our lives. And we know the Bible says that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purposes for them. Now, we learn up in here that all things may not all be good, but he works it out for our good. Uh, see, see, uh, a lot of people may have done you dirty, 
A lot of people may have been uh, 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 rude to you and mean to you and have counted you out. Or the truth of the matter is, you may have made a mess of your life all your own. But listen, because of where you are now, you will now have a chance to have a one-on-one -on -one encounter with Jesus that can change your life and potentially cancel out the generational curse that was passed down by your daddies. So tonight, somebody needs to get bold and declare that you will be the last person in your family that will be bound to sin. Uh, you'll be the last person in your family that will be a slave to iniquity. Uh, you will be the last person in your family that will be entrapped by your transgressions. Uh, and it's all because uh, that you were at the right place at the right time. And you were afforded an opportunity that other folks, listen to me, uh, did not have. What they may have meant for evil, God turned it around for your good. Now, 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 it's amazing. Follow me because I'm going somewhere. It's amazing to me that this encounter that Jesus has with this man happens after Jesus is leaving the city of Jericho. The text clearly states, as Jesus is moving outside the city, the man begins to shout, to cry out, to holler, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And I began to to leave uh, uh, Mount Vernon, and I began to go over to the scene, and I began to imagine uh, uh, that, that, that this man, this blind and broken and banned beggar, he, he literally uh, began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Uh, and I asked myself a question, what made this man shout? What made this man shout? Well, I really believe that this blind beggar shouted because something welled up inside of him that gave him a seed of faith that anticipated that God was in the neighborhood and that God was able to move over his predicament. In other words, something let him know that although he was not in the best place, he was at the right place at the right time. So he started shouting, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. But then I began to ask the question, how did this broken and banned and blind beggar, how did this man know it was time to shout? Because according to the text, he was not there when Jesus went into the city. And if he was not there when Jesus went into the city, the, the question remains, how in the world did this blind man know who Jesus was when Jesus was coming out of the city? Well, obviously, the grapevine was buzzing with some amazing news about what happened inside the city of Jericho. And although the Bible does not actually say what went on inside the city of Jericho, I am convinced, I am convinced that something actually did happen inside the city of Jericho. Well, how do you know? Uh, how do you know, Peter? Well, the Bible says that, that Jesus went in with 12 and he came out with a multitude. I, I, you'd miss that thing. Uh, the Bible says, uh, because I'm convinced that something happened in Jericho, the Bible says that Jesus went in with 12 disciples, uh, but he came out with a multitude of people. Uh, see, see, you don't go in with 12 and come out with a multitude unless something happened. Uh, 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 no, no, you don't go in with 12 and come out with a mega crowd uh, following behind you unless something happened. See, I believe that, that somebody gave this blind and broken and banned beggar a word that there's a stranger in the city who has power to heal you. See, see, 
some of y'all, uh, you may have missed Jesus come, coming into this Bible conference, uh, but by the grace of God, he allowed your life to be spared, uh, and you can still catch him coming out of this Bible conference. Uh, and I declare that Jesus had orchestrated this place and this space and this time. And he has been patiently waiting to orchestrate or an encounter with you. So whatever you do, please don't miss this moment. Don't leave here just say, well, that was some good preaching. Or I got some good ideas. And I got a good memory. And leave here without Jesus. Leave here with an encounter with the greatest love that that you will ever know. Somebody ought to say amen or say. So this blind and broke and, and, and band beggar uh, began to shout because he heard something. And I declared that he had to hear something to believe something. Uh -huh. See, the issue was, listen to me, was that he could not see. So the Bible said he heard. Ah, uh, you didn't get that. Uh, let me back that thing up. Uh, uh, the issue was that he could not see. He was blind. So the Bible says he heard. Listen to this. This man used what he had left to get what he did not yet have. And I'm so grateful tonight that God will always leave you with something uh, for us to receive what he wants us to get. Uh, uh, how do I get past my past? Uh, that not only do I reject the negative names of my past. Uh, 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 in other words, you got to forget about who they say I am. You got to respond, watch this, in obedience to whatever news that we hear about Jesus. But it often requires us to be at the right place at the right time. Now, now this is very important because the Bible says that Jesus is not stopping by, but he is passing by. And as far as we know, Filthy Junior, that's what his name is, Filthy Junior was not on his agenda. Because if you look at the context of this text, Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem to die for the sins of a lost mankind. So it's shortly, it's a, it's a short window for his life to change. So, so, so this blind beggar had, had no time to prepare for the encounter. So that tells me that we have to live in a constant state of readiness. In other words, we got to be prepared for whenever God chooses to move. So, so whenever he does uh, uh, yeah, provide an orchestrated divine opportunity or window, we got we to gotta be ready to respond whenever, whenever, because sometimes, listen to me tonight, you have to respond to him when you are at your lowest point. Broke, here comes Jesus. Uh -huh. Blind, here comes Jesus. Uh, Bad, here comes Jesus. Uh, begging, here comes Jesus. Uh, his life is at his worst state, and here comes Jesus. Uh, and he did not have time to complain about a situation. Uh, he did not have time to blame all the rest of the hypocrites. Uh, he did not have time uh, to get people back who did him wrong. Uh, here comes Jesus. Uh, he realized that Jesus was coming. Uh, I only got a short time. So I got to seize the moment. But here's the deep part. Because the text says that Jesus is literally coming at a time where he cannot see him. And he doesn't know if Jesus can see him. Let me back that thing up. The deep part is, the text says, that Jesus is coming at a time that, watch this, this blind, ban, uh, a broke beggar cannot see Jesus, and he doesn't even know if Jesus can see him. But that's faith. Faith does not operate on what you see, but is based on what you hear. The Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so when he heard that Jesus was coming by, he uh, you missed that. Uh, I said, and I will say it again, uh, faith 
faith does not operate on what you see, but it's based on what you hear. The Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So the Bible says when he heard that Jesus was coming by, he acted. Because faith is not seeing your way, but faith is moving, knowing that the way will appear. Because people who walk by faith recognize, watch this, their ears are their eyes. He heard that Jesus was coming by. He heard. And this is powerful. So if he heard about Jesus, Somebody better get this. That means back in Jericho, watch this, there were people in Jericho who had more than just a synagogue or temple faith. In other words, they, they had a religion that was based, watch this, on more than just sitting inside the four walls of the church because too often, we have a theology of evangelism that says, come to my church, come hear my choir, come hear the preacher, come to my service. And Jesus in the Great Commission says, go, go. You're the light of the world. You're the salt of the earth. Go. We have a coming. But Jesus is saying, go. See, nobody is going to be saved as long as you stay locked in your Sabbath morning clubs. Church ought to be a deployment station where people are trained to go out, to go. And I declare that the church still needs people who would dare to stop being secret agents and become uniformed soldiers who are not ashamed of the gospel and understand that it's the power of God and the salvation. I'm talking about the world still needs disciples who will call on the name of Jesus on your job and at the store. Call on the name of Jesus at work. Call on the name of Jesus at the mall in your home because there are still blind people people in the streets uh, who need to hear the name of Jesus. Uh, he heard that Jesus of Nazareth. His life was changed because people uh, began to share their faith. Uh, I declare tonight that there's still power in the word of God. So as Jesus was on his way out of the city, the timing, listen to me, is right. Because now, ha, 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 now this broken band and blind beggar, now, ha, he heard something. He heard about the stranger in the city who got power to turn your life around. Uh, he, he heard about uh, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords uh, who had power to heal. Uh, and he heard enough about Jesus to begin his transformation. Somebody needs to hear me because... Uh, uh, our, our diet, oh man, uh, the, the, our diet, our diet, yeah, it, it's awesome. Uh, uh, you look around the world, we got 23 million people in our church. Our, our buildings are impressive. Uh, we got blue zone status. Uh, that's incredible. We have uh, the Sabbath, which is a delight, and I'm glad about it. Uh, but let me make it very clear. It is only Jesus that has the power to turn your life around. Uh, anybody here knows that there's power in the name of Jesus. I'm talking about the who soothes all our doubts and calms our fears. Uh, I said there is power in the name of Jesus uh, and I'm not ashamed of that name uh, and I declare that there's no other name uh, given among men uh, whereby we are saved tonight. Uh, so you know what I made? I made up in my mind uh, at, at every wedding I'm going to lift up the name of Jesus. Uh, at every funeral I'm going to lift up the name of Jesus. Uh, when I'm back and somebody. Uh, I'm going to do it uh, in the name of the Father, the name of the Holy Ghost, but especially in the name of Jesus. Uh, and every choice I make, I'm going to call on the name of Jesus. Uh, it's an all-purpose name uh, because that name, every knee will bow and, and every tongue confess. Uh, Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. Uh, yes, uh, I'm glad about that name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so he heard him, he heard him, he heard him. Jesus of Nazareth. He heard him as Jesus of Nazareth. But he called him, watch this, by his messianic title, son of David. 
Oh, my, 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 my. Now, now, you didn't get that. If you read the text, it says that he heard his name was Jesus. But, but when he began to call his name, he literally called him by his messianic title. And his messianic title was son of David. Bartimaeus, listen, is the only one who is recorded in John Mark's book that refers to Jesus by his messianic title, which is son of David. So one scholar suggests that Mark highlights the story of Bartimaeus to raise an indictment on those in this story who can see. Because Mark wanted to show that the ones walking with Jesus had it wrong. But the only one who could truly see was the one who was blind. I, I discovered that sometimes it's the most religious who are walking. Uh, 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 it's the most religious who are walking with him who have it wrong. And the ones who are on the street who can truly see him. See, interesting that the only one who got his name right is someone who we figured had not ever seen him. So, so the question is, uh, we know who's, who's blind in this text, but who really can't see? Because the tragedy of life is to have sight, but you still cannot see. So the Bible says he shouted, Jesus, mm, son of David, have mercy on me. Now watch this. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. All of a sudden, uh, uh, Jesus' homies, his disciples, his boys, his posse, his road dogs, uh, his disciples, hey, they, they look over to that guy. Hey, don't, don't embarrass yourself like this. We don't act. We're dignified. We, 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 go, we go to Mount Vernon. We go to Sharon. We, 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 go to, we, we go to New Rochelle. We're cool. We're composed. Uh, we're sophisticated. We're, we're educated. Shh, shh, shh. Jesus, son of David, have mercy. He kept on. Uh, Jesus, son of David. I mean, desperately. Jesus. And, and, and the disciples, shh, shh, shh. hey, hey, cut, cut, cut that noise. Chill, homeboy. It, it don't take all of that. It, it, it's, it's amazing that, that many people don't mind you making noise in places that don't count. And at church, they want you to chill out. But at the club, they want your hands in the air like you just don't care. And, and, and in the club, you ain't getting no help. You're not getting any deliverance. You ain't getting no prayer answers. There will always be people who want you to tone down, to be reserved, suppress your testimony so that they can be comfortable. But the Bible says he kept on crying out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And, and, and they told him, shut up. Be quiet. B but, but let me tell you what I've discovered. Haters have a place in all of our lives. And when you really look at it, your haters, they can serve as your motivators and escalators and your elevators. Come on and say amen. See, see. Haters, ah, I wish somebody was with me tonight. Haters have a divine and practical purpose in your life. Uh, uh, so, so don't hate on your haters. Uh, uh, matter of fact, you need to get disciplined and thank your haters. Uh, uh, don't spend all your breath and, and all of your thoughts and all of your energy doing battle with people who you don't like because they don't like you. Uh, because God says we got to learn to love our enemies and, and bless them that curse you and pray for them that despitefully use you and even say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. And then we got to do that and keep on moving. They said, hey, shut up. But watch this. The more they told him to be quiet, the Bible says the louder he got. You better watch this today. Uh, that, that's, that's why you got to learn to thank your haters. Because 
if you did not have uh, uh, difficult people in your life, uh, uh, you know, uh, if you did not have any opposers, uh, if you did not have members in your life, uh, uh, you, you, you would not uh, probably be praying as much. Uh, 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 if you did not have anybody uh, in your life that got on your nerves, uh, maybe you, you not, would not be in church tonight. Uh, so thank them and let me show you why. They told him, shut up. He said, son of David, Jesus, have mercy on me. <laughs> shut up. Did we tell you shut up? Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Did we tell you're behind to be quiet? <laughs> Jesus. Son of David, have mercy on me. Uh, uh, they said, if he don't shut his mouth, he's just getting on my nerves. Uh, and it says he got even louder. Jesus, son of David, uh, have mercy on me. Uh, and, Lord, watch, uh, and the louder they got, uh, the louder he got, uh, and the louder they got, uh, the louder he got, uh, and finally Jesus heard. <laughs> Y'all missed it. You're slow tonight. Uh, uh, so uh, if he did not have any haters uh, making him get louder, he would not have gotten loud enough to get heard. So you need some haters in your life. Uh, uh, so get some applications and pass them out uh, because haters are necessary for your growth. Uh, uh, haters are necessary to keep you on your knees. Uh, so he shouted, uh, cries out uh, to God enough to get heard. So this year, <laughs> I'm going to challenge you to never stop calling on his name. Uh, Oh, unto thee, O oh Lord, uh, will I lift my voice. Uh, keep on calling that name. Uh, bless the Lord, uh, O oh my soul, uh, and all that is within me. Uh, uh, oh, give thanks uh, unto the Lord, uh, for he is good, uh, and his mercy uh, endures forever. Uh, I, 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 I will make a joyful noise uh, unto the Lord. Uh, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continue. His praise shall continue. His praise shall continue. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. I will shout unto the Lord with a voice of triumph. And when he shouted, Jesus stopped in his tracks, and it got his attention. Because I've learned a little shout will do you some good. Come on and say nothing. You got to ask the Savior to help you. Uh, comfort, strengthen, and keep you. Uh, and I declare he is willing to aid you. Uh, do I have a witness that he'll see you through? And so the disciples went from, watch this, saying shut up to get up. Uh, uh, Jesus said, hey, 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 don't, don't mess with them. Tell them to come over to me. Because to get past your past, watch this, you have to rise up and let everything go that comes between you and Jesus. Watch this. Because I learned when the, when the man called out to him in desperation, the Bible is clear that he called God from the ground. This blind and broken and banned and begging, he was calling out to God from his knees. So the man's posture was, he was humbled, he, he, he was low. See, see, he, 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 was not, he was not crippled, but he was blind. So he could have called Jesus standing up, but he did not call on Jesus standing up. 
He called on Jesus from his knees close to the ground. See, life has a way of humbling us. Life has a way of driving us to our knees. He began literally to call on God at his lowest point. In other words, uh, it was a symbol that he, his pride was gone. There were no excuses. There was no sin. He, just a desperate cry as he throws away his cover that represented his past. And I believe that this man represents each of us who have assembled in this place. Because we all start out with a terrible name and a terrible circumstance. Sinner. Born in sin. Shaping in iniquity. But God keeps on pursuing us. And he shows up in our seasons of blindness, our seasons of of brokenness, our season when we're banned, the season when we're beggared. He shows up in the circumstances that drives us to a place of our need. In other words, sometimes God allows circumstances to humble us. And then when we encounter him, we begin to speak a word. He begins to speak a word about our future with him. And then Jesus gives him a blank check. What do you want? He says, I just want to be able to see. And Jesus granted this blind and broken and banned beggar. He granted him sight. And, and when he saw clearly after the pain of his life, when he had a renewed commitment, he said, your faith in me made you whole. And you have been able to see in order to follow me. Because the Bible says that after he was able to see, the Bible says he followed Jesus in his way. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight, to get past your past, because I do believe God, to get past your past, you got to reject the labels of your past. You got to recognize the importance of God's timing. You got to be willing to shout out his name until he responds. But lastly, Rise up and let everything go that is between you and Jesus. One of the most insidious consequences of a graceless religion is that it literally smuggles your past into your future. I wonder if there's anybody other than me that has done stuff in your life that you're not proud of. It, can I see a hand? Let me raise both my hands. If, if, if we're honest, all of us have done stuff we're not proud of and some of us still struggle with a duplicitous nature. Some of us here in this room and on the virtual space, listen to me, have been laid flat by a failed relationship. Maybe a marriage made in heaven but now existing in hell. Somebody here who's even now living life in misery because you know the choice of being with that wrong person. Maybe somebody here is burdened down because you, you have in your life issues surrounding abuse, abandonment, or 
Maybe you're still stuck with an addiction that just... Maybe you're just a workaholic. You're chasing career over your family. You cannot get your life in balance. Maybe something that you may have done in the past that is now rising up to indict you, to hunt you. But when we come face to face with the master, grace, somebody shout out grace. Grace allows us to grow from those experiences and we don't have to live back there. Through grace, we can be restored to full sonship. What makes grace so amazing? My past does not have to define me. My past does not have to control me. And your past does not have to destroy you. Because God still offers grace. And Jesus granted him sight. And after he saw and began to see after the season of his pain and darkness. He made a renewed commitment. And he followed Jesus. He didn't just take the information. He didn't just take the healing. He didn't just take his restoration and say, man, that was good. And he did not go back into his dark past. But he followed Jesus. Somebody here tonight. Somebody here tonight. I did not come to play. I say this every night. I did not come. I'm very serious about declaring the word of God. I, I, I pray and I spend time just praying for souls online and in this house. I pray for this team. Like I said, I just do a small part. I, I, and, and I have been very serious, and I know tonight, and many of you have been serious, the prayer warriors, and I thank you for this. If you've never prayed before, I want you to pray right now because somebody here needs to move from darkness to light. Somebody has struggled with, with labels that people have placed on you. Somebody has struggled with, with literally, do I have enough faith to call out Jesus? And does Jesus have enough power to recognize me? And, and, and you have haters in your life, and you did not know that the haters in your life was God's way. He allowed them so that you could call on Jesus. And, and sometimes the worst situations in your life are, are God's avenues of him to show up at the right place at the right time. But he did not receive healing until after he called his name and Jesus said, get up your faith has made you whole. Everybody praying, Father, in the name of Jesus. I, I'm, I'm so excited about you, that you are a God of grace. For every night, you have literally showed up. You have brought your people to your house. You have helped them to see online that, that this, is not a, this is not a play thing. And so, God, as we're all in one accord, there are those who want to make the choice to go all the way. And tomorrow we have many people who have decided to say, Jesus, we're going to put you first. Tomorrow there are people who are going to go down in the water of your grave of baptism. And, and you can decide tonight that I'm tired of doing things my way. I'm tired of walking around in darkness. I'm tired And I'm walking around broken and abandoned and blind and it just seems like I'm beggar. Now God has reminded me that grace is available and newness and life can be given. And so on this 
Friday night on your Sabbath on the, on the very 28th of October. God has arrested you, grabbed you by the spiritual collar. He has literally shaken you. And you know that you're here tonight online and in this place. And for the next two minutes, there, there are people literally in this house who want to go all the way. I want you to make a bold step and get up and come down and you're going to say that I'm going all the way with the Lord. If that is your desire tonight, I don't need anybody to look around. I don't need anybody. If you have your call in election, sure, I want you to pray. But if you know you don't, if you want God to come and fill you, I don't care if you are a church member. I don't care if you if, if you have been in the church for years, you got officers, and you know you need a connection with Jesus Christ. You know, uh, you know a, a full anointing is waiting for you for these last days. You need God to fill you up. And I want you to respond as God has given you the unction. If that is your desire, stand to your feet and come down. And I want to pray with you because it's about believing in God. Just come on down. Just come on down. Just coming down. You know who you are. Praise God, my sister. Oh, I, I Come on, come on down. Praise God, my sister. Somebody else need you. Everybody praying. Just praying. Go look around. See who's moving. If you know. God bless you, my sister. God bless you, my sister. God bless you, my sister. God bless you. It's time for you to do it right now. Come on. Don't play. Don't play. He will always. God bless you. Come on, somebody else needs to come. God bless you. Come on, God bless you. God bless you. Come on, it's your time. Begin to move right now. You know, join. Come on. Band. Here comes Jesus. Broken. Here comes Jesus. Beggar. Here comes Jesus. Whatever. Whatever. Come on. Come on. Man, young person in the balcony, come on, come on. I believe God. Do you believe him? Come on, come on, come on, come on. Somebody else needs to come. You know who you are. This is your season. This is your season. Tomorrow is your day. I'm getting ready to pray. I'm getting ready to pray. Come on. Come on. I'm just going to do another one minute. There are other people. There are other people. Don't let anybody tell you that God does not have a future for you. Somebody on this side. Somebody else on this side. Come on. Come on. Come on. I see you. You're struggling. Just pray. God wants to give you another chance, a new start. Come on. Another 45 seconds to believe. Come on, come on. Come on, somebody else needs to come. Somebody needs to come. Come on, I see you. I see you. Come on, I'll come and get you. If you're a little shy right now, just, just put your hand up and I'll come and get you. Just put your hand up. The preacher will come and get you. Come on, the preacher, just put your hand up. I'll come and get you right now. I believe God. He will always come through. He will always come through. I will too. There you go. 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 Yeah, there you go. Come on. Come on. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. I believe he God. Oh, oh, I. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Somebody. No, no, no. Don't, don't delay. Don't delay. Broken. Bam. Blind. Beggar. Come on. Here comes Jesus. He's right here. Come on. Somebody else needs it. I see you. Somebody needs to renew their walk. You have walked away from God. God is giving you another chance right now. It's time to refresh your anointing. Somebody, right now, I will choose to believe. I will choose to believe. Come on. Come on. Don't delay. Don't delay. Come on. 30 more seconds. Come on. Everybody, 
Just pray and sing this song. Oh, I, oh, I believe God. His word is true. Come on, come on. I, I see people are struggling. No, don't let this moment pass. Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. Come on, child. Come on, young man. Yes, sir, young man. Come on, come on. We receive you. Come on, young man. Come on. I will choose. Don't let nobody tell you you're too young or you're too old or it's too late. They are lying. Come on. Come on. Come on. Whether you're in your tender teens, your teachable 20s, your tireless 30s. Come on. Oh, I pray, pray. Somebody else needs to come. Somebody else needs to come. Come on up in the balcony. Somebody else. You know, you know that God, you know that God is calling your heart right now. What he says, don't delay, don't delay. He'll always come through. He's passing by right now. Broken, here comes Jesus. Blind, here comes Jesus. Man, here comes Jesus. Come on, come on. Somebody needs to renew their walk right now. Somebody needs to say, I need a fresh anointing for these last days. Somebody knows some couple needs to come. Some family needs to come. Oh, I believe. Yes, come on. Come on. Ten. Nine. Hey, you know somebody else is. I will too. Get ready to pray. I will choose to believe. I believe. God, stop. Just say, I, I will choose to Father God, uh, I stand only in the power of who you are because you've, you've asked for all of us to be faithful. And we stand here once again tonight thanking you for your love and your grace and for the story that is found in Mark 10. And, and Lord, I believe it's a representation, a story that all of us can relate to because, because we're all born in sin, shaping in iniquity, but but the circumstances of our life, you orchestrate or you allow so that we can have an encounter with you. So in the name of Jesus tonight, I thank you, Lord, for the ones who have made decisions in the virtual space, ones who have made decisions to be connected with you and to go all the way with you. I thank you, Lord, for the demonstration, once again, of your power. I thank you, Lord, for the ones uh, uh, who who express that they want to be saved. They want to be connected. They want to be in relationship with you. They want the future that is only found in you. So Lord, would you seal their decisions tonight? Would you give them the awareness that they have salvation tonight? Give them uh, an understanding that your angels are now protecting them and, and that your spirit is sealing them for us purpose because you have created them on purpose for purpose. Lord, we're, we're confessing our sins. We're repenting. We're saying we're turning around. And we, we thank you, Lord, for that you are a God who knows how to adjust every situation perfectly. So I declare in the name of Jesus, I declare in the name of Jesus that you are a God who still saves, still forgives and still turns life around. So I thank you and I praise you for what you will do with everyone who has come up in this circle. 
just begin to, Lord, give them a peace, a satisfaction, and a joy unspeakable. Help them to know that they can get past their past and that the future in you is full of hope and full of purpose, but most of all, full of joy. Thank you for the demonstration of your power once again. We give you the glory and the honor. And for all of those who have come, we just want to say thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your prayers and your support. And Lord, on tomorrow, Lord, let your glory be seen in a magnificent way. Lord, just take us, break us if you must, but then with your divine hands, put us back together again. I declare that you are a God who knows all, hears all, feels all, but a God who knows how to put it all back together. I thank you and I praise you for this moment. If you love God and if you receive the word and his salvation afresh, can you put your hands together in celebration? Come on. Oh, we could do better than that. Come on, we could do better than that. Oh, we could do better than that. Come a little bit forward. Everybody, just come a little bit more forward. Come on, just take five steps forward. If you could put five steps forward. I will choose. Come on. I will choose to believe. Everybody who's come forward, make sure you get a card. Make sure you get a card. God bless you, young man. He got you. The anointing is on you. You're going to be a great man. I will choose. Everybody here, you want to get a card? You want to fill it out? And go all the way with God. And God is going to bless you real good. Come on, everybody, shout out. Stay right there. Say, I, I, Praise God, praise God for tonight. And praise God for you who the Lord has called to this marvelous light. I want you to know that God has his eyes on you and will be taking care of you. So as you fill out these cards, may God bless you. May God bless you. I invite the other rest of the congregation to give their offerings. And if you see the cards on your seats, you can fill them out too. If you have a decision to make, as you see those cards, put your names and every request that you may have. You will put those cards in the baskets. So your offering, your donation, your partnership with us as we celebrate coming to the close of this journey to joy, give an offering as God has blessed you and don't forget to put in your decision card. I want to invite the rest of the congregation to stand and to come this way. This is our last night of the prayer circle. And we are going to pray together for whatever need you may have, whatever special request you may have, what you want God to do for you tonight. Aren't you glad that God is passing by your way tonight? Aren't you glad, my friends? Aren't you glad that Jesus sees where you are when no one sees you? Aren't you glad that even at the last moment of Jesus coming out of the city, he has time for you. Aren't you glad about that tonight? So come on, everybody. Let's just pray together. I invite all the congregation to come together for this last circle of... Pastor, what an amazing word. You, I, I love the illustration you gave of a blind man that could hear Jesus' voice. It was beautiful. It was so beautiful. I never heard it told that way, but it's one of my favorite stories in the Bible. So thank you so much. And I just want to ask you, because I know that there's still some, some viewers who are on the fence. And I don't know, you said, you put it all out there, but I don't know what else you could say to them to help them make that decision to live for Jesus. What can we do? Well, you know, we, we've asked the Spirit. Thank you, the, God, God. the Spirit is the Spirit. Where we are, the Spirit 
is is alive, the spirit is well, and the spirit is moving in your heart. I just say that whatever you do, whatever you do, do not ever resist the voice of, of what God's spirit is saying. And it's gonna be the best decision that you'll ever make. So we are so excited. Yeah. We're excited about the possibility of your future. So I just want you to know that if you hear his voice, it is absolutely the right thing to do. And with your family, you'll begin to feel the healing, the joy, the peace. And it, all, it won't always be easy, but it will always be victorious. So may God bless you as you make that choice. And we believe that you will. Amen. There's nothing to add after that, Pastor. Amen. Thank you so much. Amen. We yeah. love you. Oh, we appreciate you. Thank we you. love you too, Sister Davis. Thank you. Your journey to hope, healing, and happiness has begun. We are excited to have you join us each night. If you're registered online, see you at 7 p.m. for our next meeting. Bring a friend or join online. Don't miss a night with Dr. Everybody Emil Pure from October Let's 1st to the 29th. Everybody confess, come on and shame the devil. Say, I got it. You have been blessed, courtesy of the Journey to Joy Bible Conference.